Hey, and welcome back to the eLearning video series on BSF BioWaste Processing. This module in the BSF Rearing chapter will focus on the larval growth stage. By the end of this module, you'll be able to describe the process parameters of this stage. You'll be able to formulate the nutritious feed that is required for the larval growth stage. You'll be able to implement the feeding schedule for the nursery larveros. And you'll be able to execute dismantling on nursery of vittles and handle the residue. In a normal setting, the five-day-old larvae would be used for organic waste treatment because at this stage, the growth stage, the larvae are voracious eaters and are ideal to convert bio-waste into protein-rich insect biomass. This module will focus on how to facilitate the growth rate of the larvae between the age of 5 days or 5 day old larvae and the age when they transform into prepupae and crawl out of the nursery laveros. In the nursery, the laveros follow a more strict feeding schedule to ensure the time between the 5 day old larvae and the time they transform into prepupae is as short as possible. The chapter on BSFL conversion will guide you through managing the larval growth stage in the bio-waste treatment unit. So as mentioned in this stage, we are really managing the feeding schedule to the requirements of the larvae. And because of that, the mortality at this stage in the nursery is very close to 0%. This we notice by knowing the number of larvae that go into the units and comparing that with the number of pre -PP that we take out plus the larvae that remain in the substrate. The stage duration is about 8 to 12 days, depending on the substrate that is being fed at this stage. The focus of the stage is to provide the larvae with an abundance of nutritious material to prepare them for future stage changes. About 8 larvae are covering each cubic centimeter in the nursery laveros, and the expected range mass range by the end of the process is about 200 to 250 milligrams per larva before they start transforming into a prepupa. So for the operational steps that we will be going through in, in the next uh, video, the following materials are required. First of all, we have a nursery lavero rack that will hold the nursery laveros and allow for enough space in between the units to for, for fresh air to, to, to flow through. This uh, will uh, prevent the temperature to rise too much or gases to build up over the nursery laveros. The nursery lavero unit that you will be hearing about and that you will see uh, in, in the video is made out, out of two components. The first is a blue outer box and the second is a gray inner box that will hold the, the nursery feed. A bulk balance is used to dose the feed before adding it into the nursery laveros and a spatula together with a feed dosing beaker are used to dose and stir the material. For the preparation of the nursery feed, we use a, a large storage bin, in our case an 80 liter version, but you can also use a smaller version, um, and water with chicken feed. Dry cocoa peat is used as an absorbent. Uh, first of all, in the outer box to ensure that PVP cannot crawl out. And secondly, in the, on top, in the lavero units on top of the feed to absorb additional water. The feed is prepared and is weighed on the bulk scale, which has a capacity of 150 kilograms and accuracy of 50 grams. We are now going to show you how to set up, feed and remove a nursery lavero. First of all, we want to talk a little bit about the feed. Dry broiler chicken feed seems to be the most readily available nutritious material to ensure fast growth of the larvae, although it is costly. Alternative materials are soy-based materials, dairy-based and or grain-based materials. We start the preparation of the nursery feed by preparing two kilograms um, of a selected material in our case, we mix 30% dry chicken feed and 70% water to make up the two kilograms of feed. Make sure that you stir it until there's a homogeneous mixture and no large chunks are, are left in the material. Now we're going to prepare the nursery laveros. We take a clean nursery laveros, meaning the two units, the outer box and the inner box, and add this food the feed that we prepared to it. We cover this feed with cocoa peat or perhaps wheat bran if cocoa peat is not available, and we then add the 10,000 five, five doll on top of the cocoa peat. We take a clean transfer container and add cocoa peat into the corners and along the edges of the container and place then the nursery laveros into it. The nursery laveros needs to be slightly smaller than the transfer container. 
make sure you check this before uh, selecting your two units that make up the nursery levels. Place a sticker with the date code and the amount of larvae that have been added onto the nursery levels. Put, the, put the, the, the units into the nursery rack. During the two and a half weeks of operation or uh, shorter if, if you have a more nutritious feed, the newly set up nursery levels receives will receive mixture of a, of chicken feed and water in our case in different concentrations this mixture is fed on specific days with the time period according to the feeding schedule after around two and a half weeks the nursery levels is removed and the remaining pre pp in the transfer container are harvested so we have just passed through the operations here's a recap of the different steps according to the checklist that we have we have passed through just now first we will remove the old nursery lavados. We remove the material and use some of that for the fly attractant in the loft cage and we clean the containers. Then we prepare a new nursery lavados. In our case, we set up two containers per day. We add two kilograms of, of feed to each of the boxes. We cover them with cocoa peat and we add the larvae. In case of the checklist in front of you, we, we, we're adding 17 day old larvae from the waste treatment units. But as you learned from the video, you can start with five day old larvae when having the nursery separated from the bio waste treatment unit. We then place the box in the outer box and add the cocoa peat in the outer box. Then we added food in the nursery of vittles, which ha have previously been set up. For this, we use the schedule that you will see in the next slide. We use the feeding schedule that you see in front of you and for the feeding material, we're using a mixture of chicken feed and water. On the top row, you will see the different heads of the columns with the amounts to be fed. You will notice that most of the columns will indicate a number in kilograms with a percentage of CF, which means an amount of feed in, in, in kilograms of which a percentage is this CF or chicken feed. Most of the column heads will indicate two kilogram 30% CF, which means two kilogram of feed with 30% chicken feed. The other 70% is then water. Further to the right, you'll see that at some point we will be using only 15% chicken feed and then we'll be using even 0% chicken feed or only water. This is because we have to make sure that the material becomes more wet towards the end so that the pre can crawl out of the nursery lavados. More on that will be discussed in the next module on the pre stage. The other rows are filled with date codes of which the way to read the codes was presented to you in the introduction of this learning course. So in this example, we're starting at 30.1, which means week 30, day one, which is then Monday of week 30. You, you will see that it goes down until reaching seven or Sunday before the week numbers change into a new week. In this case, week 31. The date codes in the first column mean the day that you have to do the other operations that are in that are listed in this row. So if we take the top row, you will see 30.1 and next to it, you will see another time 30.1 mentioned. This means that on Monday in week 30, you set up a nursery lavero or multiple nursery laveros in case you have a larger scale nursery, which will have the date code of 30.1. If you look at the next code mentioned, it is 29.5. This means that the nursery lavero, which was set up on Friday in week 29, will have to receive 2 kilograms of feed, of which 30% is chicken feed. If we go further, you'll see that the unit that was set up 2 days before that, so on in week 20 on Wednesday or 29.3, will receive again 2 kilograms with 30% chicken feed as well as the unit on the day before that, and, and so on. The feeding of older nursery laveros listed on one day will, be, will continue un, uh, until the last date code listed in that last column, where you will dismantle the, one of the old nursery laveros. In this case, for the activities on Monday week 30, or 30.1, the nursery lavero with the date code of 27.5 which was Friday of week 27, is going to be dismantled. To make it easier to pass through each action you need to finish on, on the day, you can strike through the units that you have completed. For example, if today is 30.1,
you will first set up a Nurse Lavero unit. If you finish this operation in the second column, you can strike it through. Then, if you finish feeding one or more of the Nurse Laveros that were set up before, you can strike through those date codes as well. You continue like that until you have finished all the operations and then you can strike through the, the date of, the, of today of which all the operations have been done in the very first column, which will then indicate that you have completed all the actions that were supposed to be done on this day. We are nearing the end of this module. Here are some questions for you. What is the main function of the larval growth stage in the BSF life cycle? It is to build up fat reserves for the later transformations and the adult stage. What material do the larvae feed on in this stage? It is a nutritious feed, for example, chicken feed, in the nursery or the bio waste in the conversion unit. We've already come to the end of this module on the larval growth stage. We learned in this module that the larval growth stage as part of the BSF life cycle comes before the prepupae stage and after the hatchling stage. We learned that the five day old larvae are added into a nursery laveros on top of a nutritious substrate until they've reached the prepupae stage where they crawl out. We've also learned that the feeding schedule can be prepared and used to follow which nursery laveros need to be fed on which days and with how much substrate. Thank you for watching this module part of the e-learning video series on BSF BioWaste Processing. More information can be found in the BSF step-by-step -step guide, which you can download through the QR code here. Both of these materials were part of the forward project by EWAC in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Works in Indonesia and funded by SECO, the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs.